Welcome viewers to Nene on Mama's Media, the media house of the future that links you globally. We are honored to be in the presence of Her Excellency, Dr. Aisa Tutule, the Vice President of the Republic of the Gambia. Your Excellency, welcome to Nene on Mama's Media this Saturday, the 15th of August, 2020. Thank you for honoring Mamas Media with this exclusive interview. Thank you very much. I'm pleased and honored to be here. His Excellency President Adam Abaro approved a $500 million CIS emergency fund for the coronavirus pandemic response in the Republic of the Gambia. How did you come to lead this response team? Your Excellency. Thank you very much. As we are already aware, in, uh, on the 17th of March 2020, the first COVID case was discovered in the Gambia, and His Excellency, the President, immediately recognized the fact that novel corona outbreak represents a significant risk to the country, especially to the vulnerable groups of our society. The disease has a great potential to cause high level of mobility and mortality, and to disrupt our community socially, economically, etc. For these and other reasons, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of the Gambia, President Barrow, immediately constituted a cabinet subcommittee on COVID-19 to support the Ministry of Health in responding to this pandemic. The purpose of the creation of the cabinet subcommittee, chaired by my own humble self as Vice President, with this delegated responsibility, was to support the process. The president with his team is a delegated uh, responsibility and to demonstrate active and visible leadership, political authority will be more important than ever given the complexity and global scale of the COVID crisis. This is critical for the implementation of the strategic and accelerated response and preparedness to the COVID-19 pandemic in the country with Ministry of Health is taking the lead on the epidemiological and clinical responses. So this is the great political leadership that His Excellency President Barrow has given to this COVID pandemic. Thank you, Your Excellencies. Your Excellency, what challenges or shortcomings was your team faced with, bearing in mind the constraints our government inherited from the Jammeh dictatorship and era? Well, you have to understand that COVID came at a time as a global pandemic when none of the countries we are, uh, we are expecting it. And obviously, there will be challenges. The challenges we had was to put things together at the initial stage, trying to figure out what to do and how to move. And the, one of the biggest challenges I would just uh, explain is the data, access to data. We needed data to make sure that we quickly respond. But then through that process, we realized that there are some data that was lacking and that data later on was collected and brought together. That was one challenge. The issue of the logistics. Of course, we have to cover almost 84% of the population, and 84% of the population means a lot of a big logistics. So putting the logistics together and uh, moving them together was also one um, uh, challenge. So as people were also becoming aware of the disease and the fact that uh, it has caught up with all the countries all over the world, Gambia is no different. There was need for us to also raise the awareness of the people and for them to understand that COVID is real, they have to understand that it's a killer disease and that everybody has to listen and follow the regulations of the Ministry of Health and also the uh, responses coming from the government. But nevertheless, these challenges over time were addressed and people are now being aware of what it means. And actually, I think we are moving towards the right direction. Thank you. We saw the intensive information campaigns that the government of the Gambia ran, followed by the food aid response. But many became upset with you when you mentioned about the lack of Gambian youth response in the distribution process. Do you feel that that was an unfair statement for the youth of the Gambia? Well, you must understand the fact that um, 
The response was quite a big response that His Excellency President Daraji, he gave rice, sugar, and oil, and reaching out to the whole country requires that a lot of logistics and engagement were involved. Actually, what happened was that all the things that were needed were there, and there was a need for us to bring people together who will be paid to move those things from one place to another. Of course, we are talking about the unemployment of youth, and indeed, we recognize that. So if opportunities will come or arise in the Gambia where they will be able to get some form of employment, even in short term, the first priority is to the youth. So the call I made was not to denigrate the youth of the Gambia. It was a clarion call to call them to be aware that this is a great opportunity where they can earn something in a dignified way. And my call was the concern that we had as a government to help improve the situation of youth, and that was the point. I believe that if you listen to that tape that was that, that, that is being deflected, it is about calling the young people our concern. The government is concerned about their opportunity, opportunities that do exist and they are a priority to us. It was not meant to do anything to harm them or to denigrate them, and I didn't in any way denigrate them. It was a concern to call them to participate effectively in the national development, which was also going to create some Again, Your Excellency, we saw the heaps and mountains of food aid distributed, but yet some regions claimed that the distribution was political and that, and that it did not reach the most vulnerable members of the uh, families that needed it the most. What is the response of the presidency to that? As I am talking right now, we have 91% of the population that deserve this support. We have hit them and we have been doing everything to make sure that those that deserve it will benefit and the issues that they are coming. At the initial stage, we cannot stop people from having that perception. But the president is here for everybody. He is the head of the country, he is the leader of the nation. It is his responsibility to serve the Gambians and all other people within the Gambian territory that are caught up with this COVID, and that is exactly what he did. So it is left to people to politicize it or to talk about it in a way that they may not understand. But I think it is now quite clear to the whole world and to the whole country that this has nothing to do with politics. It's about life and death, and it's about survival of the population and responding to their needs with the president as the primary duty bearer has responded to adequately. And this, I think these rumors or the misconceptions that people had that it was a politically motivated process, it's now very clear that it has nothing to do with politics. COVID is a real thing and it is around us, we've seen it, and we need to respond. And this duty as the president is exactly what he is doing by giving all the support and the responses, supporting the institutions and the experts to make sure that we deal with the pandemic. Your Excellency, the country prognosis that we received, at least here in Norway, was that the Gambia um, would have reached its peak in the number of COVID-19 contracted cases uh, between June and August 2020. We have seen the sudden surge and increase in deaths and numbers in the Gambia, though still relatively low, low compared to other regions of the of the world. What, Your Excellency, is the third phase planned to contain the spread, other than the 21-day curfew planned, and also uh, um, the present curfew, which says that people have to be at home um, every evening at a certain time. And we've noticed also that the critics um, and the opponents to the government refer to these two measures as ineffective. What's the third uh, phase of the plan to contain this pandemic in the Gambia? Thank you. Whatever we do is based on expert advice and the discussions that are, done, uh, are being done regarding the COVID. The measures that the president is taking is based on data and information that is brought in and guidance from the Ministry of Health and the WHO and also looking at the nature of the pandemic as it is right now. So what is being put in place is appropriate uh, advice coming from the relevant institutions, 
At the same time, also, the third phase cannot be determined by us, but rather based on data and information coming from the experts. And that's exactly what is going to happen when it is time to respond, because COVID is with us and we do not know when it is coming to an end. And as it falls up, far as it as it's unfolds, then experts will come up with strategies that will be appropriate for them. Thank you. Your Excellency, it's wonderful to see that you're in good health and that you have now tested negative for COVID-19 after an initial positive test. Please explain your journey with COVID-19 and the trauma involved, if any at all. Yes, uh, COVID has no boundaries. COVID has no class, has nothing whatsoever. Anybody could be susceptible to it as long as you are exposed to the, uh, uh, to the virus. And uh, what I just want to say here is that I happen to be one of those that was exposed to the virus. What I did was when I realized that I was in a scenario where one of the members died, that gave me an, uh, uh, a feeling that I need to go and test. And I did the test and it happened to be positive. So immediately I informed my president his Excellency, that I am positive, and this is the situation. And uh, there was a press release to that effect, which was, I feel, very useful for people to know that there is no class boundary within the, uh, the COVID. And I decided to follow up the medical guidelines. That is isolation, social distancing, wearing face masks, washing my hands, and also listening to the uh, advice that they give. It is through this process and the support of my family as well as the ministry. My president has been very concerned and he's been checking on me on a daily basis. I think which I really appreciate and I want to say that this is a real leadership quality that is great. Uh, I through that process I isolated and all the for all the procedures and over time I began to recover. Thank you. Critics again have said that this was a political ploy by you and the presidency and that you did not, in fact, contract COVID-19. What is your response to these allegations? I don't think anybody would pray to be sick. I see no reason why one should cook up something that is not real. We all know the reality of COVID all over the world, and it has uh, caught up with, uh, uh, with different leaders all over the world, so I am no different. I don't think it is true that there are uh, that they were, it was something that was put to the president. And the president did not know I had to do until I told him. So I was sick, like any other person may be sick, and he was informed. I, I don't pray to cook this power to say, what ulterior motive do I have to do that? Thank you. Okay. Um, Your Excellency, it was, it was um, wonderful to see that the president was in good health um, yesterday when he addressed the nation. He was looking very well, very fit, and, um, and looked as if nothing had happened. But there are rumors that the president was in fact in hiding because he had COVID-19. Was that rumor true in any way? I don't think it is true. As you have already said, you have seen him pale and, and kicking and addressing the nation with some very important information regarding the situation in the country. He is negative. It is a practice that when people, when a disease that is highly, highly contagious is in existence, it is important to observe self-isolation. And that if anything, if that is the case, that is what he did. He is negative and the results have come out negative. He is very pale and happy. And I believe all of you saw it all over the world that he addressed the nation. Thank you. Critics of the government claim that the curfew is imposed by the government to register and print false ID cards for ghost NPP voters to steal the 2021 elections. How true is this allegation? I don't know what has COVID got to do with elections that are supposed to come in 2021. There, this is of course indeed a very, very false allegation and that this government is concerned about supporting the population in going over the COVID. As we have heard from the speech of His Excellency President Barrow, with everything that he has said, it's his full commitment to the nation 
to put in anything and everything that he can as a leader and as an as a government to ensure that people move forward. You cannot stop people from saying what they want to say. But I believe that COVID is beyond politics. COVID is about life and death, and it is the responsibility of all of us, all over the world and everywhere in our uh, in our various countries, to support the leader and institutions to move this country forward rather than coming with false allegations. Your Excellency, as a feminist serving the same government, do you and other female ministers meet and mentor each other? Because the mayor, the mayoress of the Gambia, her of Banjul, sorry, as response was out of character for many feminist leaders around the world. Because what we saw her response when she sat on the stairs um, crying her eyes out, um, when we know that in fact the countries who have tackled COVID-19 the best um, in terms of their responses, all have been led by women. Is there any form of a mentorship for women in power? Well, in our government, all the women who are in power and in the position, in cabinet position, we collaborate, we support each other, we advise each other, and uh, work together in trying to come up with strategies on how we move forward to improve ourselves to build up on it, and we also work together with different constituencies in terms of that. It's not about the, only the mentoring, but it is about engage, effective engagement and the need to come together and collaborate with each other to support. That has been going on. We have been doing it within the uh, framework of our cabinet caucus with the women. We have also been uh, meeting out with the other women. For example, I have, as the Minister of Health then, worked with the mayor in the social welfare where she mobilized, we came together as a government, we were working with her to mobilize a lot of women and youth to support the Ministry of Health and everybody was out. So these are ways and means of how we come together, we collaborate as a nation. And in this case, the COVID is the same process. Everybody has a role to play, everybody has to contribute and everybody who is really keen in making things happen should play their part. Thank you. We move on quickly to other um, controversial areas that are of concern to our prestigious viewers and listeners. The recent floods in Banjul and the awarded road contract is a huge debate as the rainy season has emerged and the capital city Banjul is once again flooded. How is the presidency going to deal with this problem? The issue of flooding in Bangui can be solved when the rehabilitation is finished. Because the, instruction, the construction is still in progress and the blockade of some drains and water, water, and water outlets are being addressed. And the presidency will continue to engage some key stakeholders to address the issue of flooding in the city. We have already seen the contracting of roads in the greater Bangui area, and Bangui is part of it. We have seen the great improvements that have happened as a result of those work that are going on in areas that were traditionally flooded to the point that it was difficult to move have improved a lot. Of course, there is still more to be done and there is, uh, it's on the right track that is going on and indeed uh, the government is uh, aware of that. NDMA has conducted uh, an, a household assessment to ascertain the level of damage caused by the same flood in value and there is something being done. The government is very aware and responsive to that, and a lot of projects are coming that are going to address that as time goes. Thank you. Many feel as a feminist and a Democrat that you should have persuaded His Excellency Adam Barrow to step down after his promised three years. Can you explain to our audience why you felt the president should complete his constitutional term in office? I think uh, we have to understand when we talk about democracy. And when we talk about democracy, it's a rules-based issue. And the Gambia is also right now in a democracy. And a process also is going on. We are governed by the Constitution. And the Constitution says five years. I see no reason why the president should follow the three, year, uh, uh, the three years. 
because that is not the case in the because that is not the case the constitution. When we talk about democracy, it's a real law playing the procedures and ensuring that we keep those procedures in the practice and the practice of the constitution. Your Excellency, what is your final advice to Gambians with regards to the COVID-19 pandemic and the situation of the Gambia? Uh, I just want to take this opportunity and also on behalf of the President Barrow to take care to appreciate the frontline workers, doctors, nurses, employees, those who are in front and those who are behind the scenes in black bodies, individuals, in one way or the other, are supporting the efforts of the excellency and other people both inside and outside to the diaspora. For the effort they are making to try to contribute to us, how we can access the credit fund. You are indeed my views. You are indeed my heroes, and I do appreciate that. I would also want to say that we together we can move this country forward and fight the credit successfully. If all of us follow the rules, the regulation, and the advice that is given by the health experts, what does that mean? Wash your hands with soap and water, put on face masks, uh, observe social distancing, and also follow the rules and regulations in terms of the public orders that are given. For us to move this country forward and fight the COVID pandemic. This excellent question, Baro. I believe all this crowd, this power, and appreciation to ensure that we move forward with the process. And I think that all of us work together in responding to these issues. We will save our life, we will save the lives of the population and the lives of us. I just want to say thank you to everybody here. And right now, I just want to call all and everyone that you can survive for this if you follow the rules and the rules. You're And you will suffer from it by the of God. And I want to take the opportunity. Hey, for those that died in this process, I pray that God will take them to the to God, those who are sick and pray the same. I want to thank the media workers and the journalists, and you in particular, as we are doing, for the great work you are doing in the disability of what we are doing in the Zambia, interviewing personalities, and everybody that is there. You are a great leader in this great fight. I want to say thank you and thank you for everybody I have had. I am here and happy, and by one day, inshallah, I will go back to my office. Your Excellency, thank you for awarding Nene on Mamos Media this exclusive interview. And of course, and of course, the amazing Minister of Information with you there, Mr. Ibrahim Masila. I hope you'll award us Mamas Media an exclusive very soon. Whenever you are ready. Viewers, um, that was Her Excellency, Dr. Isa Tuture, the Vice President of the Republic of the Gambia, who came um, on Mamas Media on the Nelly Show and answered a few um, qu um, questions about the state of affairs in the Gambia and the response, the government's response to the COVID-19 um, pandemic in the country. Viewers, thank you for tuning in. We'll be back very soon with many more exclusive interviews with the shakers and movers of the Gambian community. Thank you for viewing. Next Welcome to Mama's TV station. You can tune in anytime. Mama's TV, not just another TV stations. Anytime, when I feel like I'm losing it, I tune just in time. Quality graphics that I see. Mama's TV, eh. you everywhere I go. Mama's TV. Mamos TV, you've been growing day by day, day by day. Europe, Africa, USA, you always there, you always there. Daily news for.
Sport Entertainment, Mamos always there. Mamos TV bring my cultural heritage.